I think what you'll see here at Spartex Workshop is quite unique and performed only in a few centers around the world. Uh, I can't give you the exact number, but maybe a dozen or a couple of dozens or so. Um, both are very conceptually quite different. Uh, once you get into the hard cavity where the valve is, when you do a minimal invasive valve, provided your exposure is good, then you're basically you're set. Once you've actually arrived to the left atrium or the aortic root in order to replace, respectively, the mitral valve or the aortic valve, then you're okay. You don't have to move things, and you can start working. And you don't start working until your exposure is perfect. Uh, so that's the principle that all of us follow when we're doing minimal invasive valves. Minimal invasive coronaries are, are different because you have to change your exposure all the time. Uh, you basically, uh, one minute you're working on the chest wall artery called the mammary artery. Uh, the next minute you're working on the where you attach the bypasses, within that area is called the ascending artery. Then you graft each vessel. So you have to move the heart around and it, it becomes an exercise in exposure. And uh, as Gopi Chandra was saying, it takes you very much away from your comfort zone. But I like the concept that was mentioned by him earlier, that you know you make it a routine practice and you transfer some of your comfort towards the comfort of the patient. And it's really doable. And we hope in this workshop uh, to be able to convey the message that you can do it very safely. We've shown in our series that it was very safe. I've never had a death from this operation. Touch wood. Any questions for us? And then we open the chest, we have all these things, so our hands are uh, good enough. You know, small instruments for the ASM, easy also. Whereas, go back to the, this, you have no way of putting any of your hand and your uh, operation field is further out. To reach that, we have to have special instruments designed to open only at the tip. Not the entire, the entire uh, needle hole open the other one. Can you open the other one? Can you open the other one? open the So, what do the special instruments are all designed? So, this is a little incision. The little protection is a plastic uh, uh, soft tissue spreader. That's why, the internal memory artery is open the same way. Full of open the other one. Can you open the other one? Can you Special guard than tip chair, lift chair, chest wall. Heart the chest wall is a thick space. So to create uh, instruments, to operate you know, space create just for a person that a special uh, retractors design this. In mala lift chair and the rule track, any but the wire to lift chair is a special uh, um, pulley guard. So, step we have to get ourselves familiarized with the new technology and new instrumentation. This is the wall case, ma'am, Jason, wall case. Next. This is final, uh, final uh, outcome incision, the small uh, under the nipple. This is actually 6 centimeters incision. Uh, wall replaced. Generally, it's too. 20 centimeters easy. Easy, yeah. Uh, 20 centimeters is easy. Uh, this is the standard from the chin. Thank you. For us, in those patients. The normal surgery, minimally, is Small incision to the instrument in a local area. Local and cover key access on my assistant cannot help me to do this operation. The entire steps and everything need to be done by the person whoever is doing. My colleague is doing or the surgeon, the main surgeon. So, okay, instrument by this, then I can put another instrument. So, it takes that kind of time. Creating access is going to be a little longer. There was no femoral artery to access onto the uh, heart lung machine. I was setting up uh, a mammary artery retractor. Setting up itself takes uh, 10 to 10 minutes. So all these things take add on time. But with experience, I don't know how long to uh, take. Uh, it's longer. 
than a regular operation. So it becomes very manageable. When we started back in 2005, those operations, believe it or not, took seven hours because we had no idea what we were doing. So we were basically developing the technique. And uh, also when you start, you know, we, we had to perform the operation on patients who were not selected whatsoever because people were not being sent by their cardiologists and saying this would be a mix, a good mix candidate. So I had to, as my first operation was a four vessel bypass in someone who was obese, uh, as, as is typical in North America. Uh, and we just had to manage it. Then over the years, you get referred, you know, a, a lot of patients are coming from other hospitals, from other areas in the country saying, would I be a good candidate for this? You know, I just need uh, two or three bypasses, etc. cetera. And, and of course, they are very good candidates. So I think when you start, there is what we call a learning curve. It takes longer and it should take longer. It's a little bit like when you're preparing, you know, this first space shuttle mission. Uh, the first time that the space shuttle went, they probably, you know, they, they worked for it for years and years and years and years. And then when it came later on, it, it became easier. So it's the same thing with this operation. Do we have any patents on this procedure? <coughs> Done through a keyhole. So there is patents that protect them. No, no patents for this. So with the help of the that medical equipment from uh, you world or uh, who initiated this process? So it's, it's actually it's and we don't have stock options. Uh, but uh, when mix was developed, initially there were some uh, early instruments that are not used anymore. And uh, my colleague Joe McGinn and I have worked with uh, Metronic. And uh, when I, for instance, would be aware of this, uh, about four years, four or five years ago, uh, we helped Metronic develop the instruments that we are using today for coronaries. Uh, I don't know what Dr. McGinn in New York did, but personally I refused all type of uh, stock options or any financial benefits related to the instruments. Because I'm an academic surgeon, I come from a university. What I do is research and operations, and I consider this as part of my mission, uh, which I'm sure the Coffee Channel is considering as well. So I think it's important to be independent uh, and not sell this as a product. So we are not salesmen. We just, we are promoting something which believe we believe helps patients and, and society, especially in a in a country like India.